uh, Nathaniel here. Okay, this is going to be the last uh, lecture I think I'm going to be doing on Patsy. There's a little bit more that I can cover, but I, I think the, the rest will be for discovery. Please put comments below if you'd like me to do one more. Um, it's on super advanced stuff. Um, but this one is going to be on splines. Splines. Ugh. So if you don't know what splines are, you will learn to love them. So. We, we walk in into a room, you're a data scientist, your boss says, hey, we want to predict someone's uh, FICO score based on their age, right? Or we want to predict their credit worthiness based on their age. We can, we can use this FICO score, right? Um, and you say, oh, that's, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, how do we predict this? And he's like, well, um, we think, uh, you know, it seems that, you know, when people are super young, uh, they don't have really great FICO scores, and as they get older, they get really good ones, and that um, later on, as they get super old, uh, it, it goes down. And you're like, okay, well, that, that makes sense. It's probably going to be something that's quadratic, right? I can, do, I can do some linear functions. I can square our, um, the, the input, which, which is going to be age, and that should work. But your, your boss is like, well, it actually, it's kind of like levels off in the center, and there's actually a little dip when you're, when you're around 30 and, and, and going and buying lots of houses and stuff like that. And it goes up, and there's a little peak here, and you're like, hmm, that sounds like a nonlinear function, right? It sounds really nonlinear. Um, and you tell your boss, okay, well, then I'll just go ahead and I'll make a neural network or a support vector machine or something really complex, um, right? It, and your boss is like, well, I don't like that. Uh, you know, it, it sounds really complex. I don't really understand that. Can we use linear regression, right? I understand that. I learned that in school. And you're like, hmm, can we use linear regression? And then you go back to your desk. You're like, oh, I don't know. It doesn't really sound like you can use it. It sounds like we're trying to use a linear predict, or we're trying to use a, a linear model in order to predict a nonlinear function. Okay, um, how do we do that? Well, splines are the answer. You go online, you search, you Google, and you find splines, a way of transforming your data, doing a statistical transformation of your data in order to take a single predictor and turn it into a nonlinear predictor. Um, so how do you do it? So let me show you an example of a basis spline. Uh, a zero degree basis spline. Okay, um, <clears throat> so here we go. Uh, in Patsy, you write it as basis spline, B spline, X. So this is your age in this case. Degrees of freedom. Okay, I'll talk about that. The degree. So this is a zero degree. Include intercept. That's true. Um, doesn't really matter. Um, and I go ahead and I do some plotting stuff. Uh, so this is the plot after you fit your data. Okay, and what does this look like to you? It looks like a piecewise function. It looks like a step function. And in each of these, right, it looks like we have a little function itself. This is, a, this is just a constant function, otherwise known as a, as a linear function. So this is a piecewise linear function. Hmm. So what does that mean? What is a spline? It doesn't look like we can get a lot from a spline then if we can only have these sort of like piecewise, uh, you know, constant functions. Yeah. But by the way, degrees of freedom tells you how many pieces you get. Well, what if I make it a piecewise degree one function? Okay, now we're starting to get somewhere. Now you had mentioned to me before that we get this increase and then we get this leveling off and a decrease and then a leveling off and an increase and then maybe if we have enough knots, we can go ahead and we can do this. Um, and really what, what, starts to, what starts to happen is you kick in with a degree three function. You get this degree three function and then what you'll end up with is you're going to end up with this very nonlinear function, right? You know, it's it's sort of all over the place. Um, starting from a linear function or starting from just a single uh, input and doing linear regression on top of it, right? So how do we do this? How do we do this? Um, what might be nice to see is what this actually looks like. What does this actually look like? Um, and and we'll, we'll change the results type, the return... Uh, type to equal a um, data frame. Okay. Oh, is it result type? D matrix result type. Oh, oh, it's sorry. Why didn't you say something? Uh, return uh, type is equal to a data frame. You check this out. Whoa. Uh, we've got like 0.9s, 0.08s, 0.1s, blah, 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 blah. 
each of these is a function. Each of these is a little function. And this function is represented by this blue line. It starts at one or something like that, and then it drops down. And this function one here, this is represented by this orange line. And this function two is represented by this green line. This function three is represented by this red line. And you go ahead and you combine them all into one single function, and you get this sort of like funky um, uh, nonlinear function, right? So the degrees of freedom will tell you how many of these functions we can use. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. How many of these little uh, third degree functions to use. The degree will tell you what degree of function we can use to piece these together. Um, and, that's, and that's how you take a, a linear regression and make a nonlinear uh, or, or uh, bleh, I'm sorry, that's how you use linear regression in order to uh, predict a nonlinear outcome variable. So that's a spline. Um, I've done not enough justice to it. Um, intro to statistical learning is an excellent tool, uh, as well as um, as well as other stuff that I'm going to be putting in the links below in order to teach you about splines and how to use them. But the idea here is that Patsy will do it for you. And the real fundamental idea here is that this was made, right? This super nonlinear outcome was made. So we went ahead, we, we have a single x variable, which is going to be uh, the age. And we get this super nonlinear FICO score function based on the age down here or something like that down here. Um, and we get the super nonlinear FICO function just by using the single age and linear regression. And the way that we did it is by transforming our inputs to look really weird, <laughs> just like this. Um, Okay, so with no further ado, we'll get into the good stuff. So generally speaking, um, you and so you can you can go ahead and you can increase the or you can change the knots. You can use the basis splines in order to uh, do some linear regression too. Um, no need to sort of show you this. Uh, the normally what you're, what you're going to be using, unless you actually so using using zero and one degree basis splines are kind of interesting. Um, because you can get some interesting functions out of there. Actually, I think a one degree basis line is an interesting way to uh, discretize your data in the first place. Um, so, um, but otherwise, um, excuse me, generally what you're going to be doing is just using a cubic spline. Uh, so this is a natural cubic regression spline. Um, uh, if, you, if you're going to be using splines, this is a really good one to, to go ahead and use just right out of the box. Um, you can use a cyclic spline. Uh, cyclic cubic spline CC, so this one's CR, cubic regression spline, this one's CC. Um, CC can be better, especially when you're having data points uh, near the near the ends, near the tails, because um, these just drift off to be linear after this point. Um, finally, I'll go ahead and I'll show you um, uh, what it's like to, to actually go ahead and... Um, actually, why, why am I showing you this? Hmm. So this is what this is what it's like to actually go ahead and feed new data in. Um, so it, it's true. It, I mean, I guess believe me when I say that you can you can classify new data when you see it um, using this Patsy uh, spline function. Okay. So you go back to your boss and you're like, Hey boss, I actually have a really great way to do it. All we need to do is take these simple transformations. I'm going to transform my x data, and I'm going to be able to predict this extremely uh, nonlinear output function using only age and linear regression. Your boss is like, great, here's a promotion. And you do a promotion, and you, know, you use that money in order to buy a lottery ticket, and you win the lottery, and then you um, go to Bermuda, and you find oil, and you make a big fortune based on that. So lots of good things can happen um, as soon as you start using splines. So use splines, they're really cool. Uh, not that neural networks and SVMs and you know boosting aren't aren't cool. Okay, so these these are splines. I hope this was interesting. I hope that it's blown your mind that just using simple data transformation techniques are able to do all these cool stuff uh, things. Um, so please ask any comments away uh, or ask away in any of the comment sections. I'll include a lot of links here. If you want me to do any more with Patsy or work with any other type of library, go ahead and ask. I, I'm totally down. Um, thanks again, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know in the comments.